Hello everyone and welcome to my channel, Siriana Tarot. This is going to be a reading for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. This is going to be for the waning moon period from April 14th until April 22nd when we have the new moon in Taurus. And um, this week is when, you know, we're coming off of the full moon, when our energy is slowing down, we're wrapping up loose ends. Um, it's a really good time to withdraw and allow for the release of old ideas, beliefs, and situations. It's an excellent time to reflect on personal growth and healing and just start preparing for the new moon that we're going to have on Taurus on the 22nd and, um, you know, to start thinking about new ideas and new beginnings. So without further ado, my lovely Cancerians, I'm going to um, go ahead and invite spirit, angels, ancestors, loved ones who have passed, and our spirit guides to this space to deliver the messages <clears throat> for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. Messages for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs from April 14th through April 22nd. Messages for Cancer from April 14th through April 22nd. Showing up right there, smack dab in the middle of our reading. I say our reading. For those of you that aren't aware, I'm also a Cancer. Love it. Absolutely love it, Cancer. Overall energy here is the Five of Swords in reverse. The Five of Swords is Aries, sorry, is um, Venus in Aquarius. And this is a type of energy when somebody's either bullying you or backstabbing you. Somebody's trying to win at all costs. But when this is in the reverse, this is spirit telling me that you are cutting these ties with some sort of toxic relationship, some sort of toxic behavior pattern or thought process. Okay. It very well could be an Aries. I want to say Aries. <laughs> it's not Aquarius, Libra, or Gemini energy. Um, you might have this somewhere in your chart, or you might be exhibiting these qualities, or there might be somebody in your life exhibiting these qualities or with air in their chart. Now, underneath that, we do have the Empress. The Empress is absolutely beautiful energy. She's Venusian energy, all about Venus. So it could be Taurus or Libra. So something very important and potent happened during this Libra full moon. And then also the importance of preparing to set your intentions for this new moon that's happening on Taurus. Sorry, in Taurus. Um, the, the Empress card, she's fertility. She's passion. She's a master manifester. Everything she touches, she turns to gold. She's created a fertile environment within and without to create whatever she wants. Underneath that, we do have the Eight of Swords. This is more Libra, Gemini, Aquarius energy, and this is sort of this worst case scenario thinking. Thinking things are worse than they really are. Spirit wants you to wants you to know, don't worry. You know, we've got this covered. Think of this as a little message from your angels and from spirit saying, you know what? Everything's going to work out just fine. We're cutting these cords or we're wrapping up a situation that wasn't good for you. Okay. And underneath that, we do have the King of Pentacles. It could have to do with your health. It could have to do with business, or it could have to do with an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, or just with this full, this new moon that we're going to have in Taurus. Now, my dearest Cancerians, it's a beautiful sign when you show up as yourself. This means you guys are aligned. This means you are behaving exactly the way you need to. You are exactly where you're supposed to be. The chariot card is the card of a warrior, someone who's successful, somebody who's poised, somebody who's, you know, completely aligned. If you do energy work, your chakras are completely aligned and you know where you want to go. You know how to get it and spirit saying you're doing 
all the right steps. Keep going. Keep doing what you're doing, Cancer. Success awaits you. And it's very true because the Six of Wands is coming out as your final outcome. So this week is going to be very successful. As you know, though, you guys, you can watch these readings at any time, whenever you're called to. And, um, you know, because timing is fluid here. So it doesn't necessarily mean it's just this week, but the energy of this week, you are building, you're taking the steps that you need to be successful. Um, in your surroundings, you have the Eight of Cups. This is more Cancer Scorpio Pisces energy. So you might be dealing with fellow water signs or people exhibiting these qualities. But the Eight of Cups is all about walking away from something that um, that no longer serves you. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's a bad thing either. Um, although we do see you sort of cutting cords with negative energies Um you know, these relationships or thought processes, whatever it might be. And the Eight of Cups can represent a little bit of indecision for us, my dear Cancers. Um, this can represent something or someone that you're trying to walk away from, but you're not really sure. But it can also represent, and take this how it resonates, you will know the minute I say this, if it resonates with you, it can also mean it's not time to walk away. There's more work to do. And that's just for a few of you. That's not for all of you. Okay. Now what's blocking you? We have the two of pentacles. This is Taurus Virgo Capricorn energy. And this is all about balance. It's all about taking on too much, saying yes to too many things. You might not have a work life balance. So you might be overworking um, and not focusing enough on your happiness and your joy or your family um, or on your personal growth or, you know, personal care. Um, it could be two people, two ideas, two things. So right now he's seamlessly, seamlessly juggling these two coins but he won't be able to keep up this balancing act forever. What I love about this card is you do have your trusty friend coming to bring you lunch. So another reminder that you're surrounded by your ancestors, your spirit guides, your animal spirits. There may be people in your lives as well that are here to support you, but there is a need for you to focus on just one of these pentacles. Put one of those down. There's something that you really need to focus on. Is it a person? Is it your job? Okay, only you guys will know. In your foundation, I love this. This is the Leo card. Some of you might be Cancer Leo Cuspers that, I'm, that are listening to this. For others of you, this is just the, the innate, the natural born strength that comes with being a Cancer, that hard shell. Being able to find that calm within despite what's going on around you. Again, we have the Chariot card and we have the Strength card. They're both pointing in a direction. They're both moving. She's completely nude. She's not afraid. She doesn't have anything that's holding her back. She feels completely protected. She feels completely sure with who she is, where she's going, and what she's done. Do not get caught up on the gender and the cards, but this is just that strength and the courage that you have. The mantra with this card is, I will. So Cancer, once you've made up your mind where you're going what you're doing you're going to do it okay so there might be a little bit of indecision here that's holding you back okay but the minute you you make that decision you're going to see that everything falls into place now in your recent past we have the knight of wands the knight of wands is aries leo sag finally that aries coming out <laughs> um the aries leo sag energy which is you know the knights are all about chivalry they're all about making things happen they're all about action they're people that you know of all the suits they come in quickly um except for the knight of pentacles of course but the knight of wands energy is somebody who's very usually very attractive to other people, very healthy, very active, very adventurous, very diplomatic, very passionate. They might not be the most prepared knight in the deck, but they don't really care because they know that they have this ability to just roll with the punches. But when this card shows up in the reverse, if it's dealing with love and if this is resonating with you with a love relationship, this is dealing with somebody who may have been a player, somebody who was giving you a lot of lip service but wasn't backing it up with any actions, somebody who maybe was balancing you and a bunch of other people. Again, that could be this, what's sort of holding you back or, or again, this could be your energy as well. Okay. So take it how it resonates. But the Knight of Wands, um, he's somebody who's very passionate and he's on a path and he's ready to go. And when he's in the reverse, it's like, it's come full stop. Something has took, taken him down a peg or two or five, um, you know, where he is not feeling his, his most confident. He doesn't, you know, um, you know, it could be, you know, financial hit because, you know, the, um, 
wands can have to do with money. It can also be on a spiritual level, something that's happened where you've lost a little bit of faith, either in yourself or, or someone. Okay. Um, but it's an interesting energy because it is one that does come full stop. The night, um, the Knight of Wands is also kind of about brute force. So if he runs into obstacles or challenges and he doesn't have a plan B, you know, it can just sort of stop and he can lose all of that confidence. And I'm seeing that here in the past, but I'm seeing that, you know, the strength and the resolve that you have is, um, you know, is unwavering. And, you know, what's coming in above you, Cancers, is beautiful. It's the Three of Pentacles. It's all about collaboration. So I feel like some of you may have lost faith and might feel like you were abandoned. Okay, I know that's a quite heavy message, abandoned by spirit, abandoned by God. Some of you might be working in the front lines of healthcare, and some of the stuff you've seen or been through right now might feel you might make you feel like you know there's no hope but spirit is saying you there's collaboration here you're surrounded by your angels your spirit guides um i just got a really massive ringing in my left ear as i was saying that um which for me is you know we're on the right track but this is that, you know, that you are being constantly supported by, you know, by God, by universe, by spirit, by your angels, by your ancestors, your spirit guides. You are never alone. This is a beautiful collaboration. Again, this is specifically for people who work in healthcare, or health sciences, or my essential workers, um, teachers as well. The Three of Pentacles is beautiful in, in this deck. I love it. First of all, we have the squirrel, and squirrels always, to me, represent abundance, and they have this playful, beautiful energy. Um, you know, they don't get up too early in the morning, you know, but they do get up early, and they play with their food, and, you know, they seem to have, like, a great time, you know, as they're collecting leaves and acorns, and, you know, they're just, for me, they're just beautiful animals. You can see my mom made this, um, this little raku squirrel, which who I love and adore. Anyway, um, so this, this is all about a teacher. And what I love is he's cut this apple open. He's cut it in a way that you can see the pentagram. Now the pentagram is a symbol that's innate in nature. You you find it all throughout nature and the apple, when you slice it the way that he has, you can see that the seeds form a pentagram and he's teaching these children the old ways. And so this is sort of like, for me, this is spirit and your spirit guide sort of giving you these nudges to sort of go back to basics and then also to really just go back to your authentic self, you know, using your intuition and your inner wisdom. And then, you know, recently, I think it was in the Taurus reading, I talked about grounding and I was actually listening to Pamela Gregory and she referenced a website and it's earthing and grounding and all of the um, amazing physiological reactions that the human body has to walking barefoot. So again, for my cancers who might be feeling, you know, a little bit overwhelmed or who might need to find the strength to cut through any confusion or indecision, the need to go outside, the need to look for answers within nature, even if that's spending time with your pets, sometimes that's, you know, putting your dog or your cat on your lap and sitting there and petting them and just sort of lulling yourself into a meditative state. You know, that's what they're here for. You know, they are our familiars, our guides. So they're, you know, they can be so beneficial for us in that way. Um, and you're not taking anything from them when, you know, when that's happening, you know, it's a very symbiotic re relationship with our, with our familiars and with our pets. Um, and then also with nature, you know, the Japanese talk about taking a tree bath. So if it's getting cold or you don't like to walk barefoot or something, or you, for some reason you can't, you know, a tree bath, taking a walk in the woods or just in nature, just to get back to basics. You know, the three of, um, the three of pentacles in the toth deck is, you know, about giving something the works. So just giving yourself the works and remembering that you are the architect of your life, that you can create whatever it is you want, depending on your focus point. What is your focus? Is it fear and worry? Um, is it something that didn't work out? Is it mistakes, maybe not being planned enough? Because these two cards are very, you know, are the exact opposite. The Knight of Wands is somebody who's impulsive and no planning involved, just all passion. And it kind of fizzles out because there's no sort of trajectory for it to follow. But the Three of Pentacles is coming in as giving you those architects plans, giving you that planning and that collaboration to figure out how to make this work and how to be successful. So this is for me, Cancer, an absolutely beautiful reading. 
And then your, your projected outcome is the Six of Wands. This is victory. Rising above the rest. This is complete success. Aries, Leo, Sag energy. So, you know, guys, it doesn't really get better than this. So I'm going to say it, you know, today's a good day to be a Cancer. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and pull some energy oracle cards for us and see what additional messages we have for Cancer, Sun, Moon, Rising, and Venus signs. You guys get rest and rejuvenation, 19 breaking down to a 10. So yeah, the importance of finding answers, like I said, by calling yourself into a peaceful meditative state, and then also the need for you to rest because what's blocking you here is maybe a sense of exhaustion, maybe doing too much. So trying to pull back. And again, my dear cancers, whether that's shutting the door and having a hot shower or taking a bubble bath or taking a walk in the woods, but just find that time for you. Angel of love. I love this. For some of you, this has to do with a romantic partnership. It could be a counterpart relationship. Some of you might have been feeling exhausted because you've just been constantly attracting people who weren't as serious or didn't want the same things as you into your life. But it looks like that's going to change, but you're going to have to do some of that inner work and sort of balance some of those imbalances you've been experiencing. The angel of love is just a reminder that your angels are all around you, supporting you on this journey. And especially with those things that you're very emotionally attached to, and for some of you in the area of love and romance. Now remember, we can love our jobs, we can love our family, we can love our pets. Most of all, we have to love ourselves. Ooh, Cancer, romance is in the stars. Man holding a heart. So, you know, this is interesting. So some of you might be receiving a love offering is what I'm getting. Um, some of you, this might be a job offering, okay? So some of you, I feel like some of you might be teachers or some of you might work in the healthcare professions if you're worried about your job or if you've been laid off. There's something coming to you. All right, the man holding a heart. This is somebody who's very open, somebody who's very genuine. And, you know, he's got this heart. He's very sort of flippantly sitting there, but he's very focused on you. And he's like, you know, he's about to give you this heart. So I love that job offering. It's stability and it's genuine. Okay, so some of you are going to be receiving some very genuine offers in love and romance. And for others of you, this has to do with career. Okay, and then you get the goddess of the moon. Cancer, this is our card. 52 breaks down to a seven, so I might be speaking to some of my July baby cancers. Okay, um, because I did get my July babies and my Cancer Leo cuspers here. The goddess of the moon is all about using your intuition. If you feel like that's gotten a little bit garbled recently, um, or your aura has been a little bit leaky, connect with spirit and your guides through prayer and through meditation and setting intentions to bring back, you know, uh, bring back that stability within and, um, you know, in order to create the environment that we see here with, you know, the Empress card, create that environment for you to, um, to be able to listen to your inner wisdom. Okay. Never doubt yourself and never doubt your intuitive abilities, Cancer. We are one of the most intuitive signs, um, out there. Okay. And this again, pay attention to the cycles of the moon. We just had the full moon in Libra. So what blessing were you given or what clarity came to you during this Libra full moon? And then, you know, what intentions are you going to be setting for this full, this new moon in Taurus, right? What new beginnings? And remember Taurus is about stability. It's also ruled by Venus about finances and about love. What do you need? What do you want? What do you desire? Because, you know, spirit saying, I take you know, we're all here to help deliver those things to you. All right, I'm going to be pulling some Enchanted Spell Oracle cards. These Medieval Hedgewick Magic cards, these are particularly good for healing. And during this waning moon period, healing is so important. Just withdrawing, taking care of you. All right, as we're, we're coming down off the high of that full moon, preparing for this new moon in Taurus on April 22nd. Wow, solitude. Yeah, we see that with the rest and rejuvenation. You, there's a need for a little bit of a timeout, Cancer. I've never, I've, I haven't pulled that card ever. And then you get ritual. 
Look at that. So you get the moon goddess right next to ritual. Some of you guys are healers. Some of you guys are also um, taking part in new moon and full moon rituals. Someone who I absolutely respect um, out there on YouTube in, and she also has a shop on Etsy. I'm no way in no way affiliated with her, but she's one of my personal gurus who I always turn to for full moon rituals. Um, and also new moon is, um, the sage goddess and her name is Athena. I can never pronounce her last name, but you can look her up. She's the sage goddess. Her, her full moon rituals are off, off the charts out of this world. Um, so some of you might need to look her up if you already don't follow her. She's absolutely amazing. Um, she also does a lot of work with crystals and with herbs and shamanism. Absolutely lovely. Um, the goddess of the moon next to ritual. I think the solitude energy is quite clear. Um, the need to sort of go within, need to do the self-care, um, maybe pull away. You might be feeling, you know, you might be picking up on everybody else's energy right now. And especially if you've been working in or living in a really tough environment, um, you know, where other people might be freaking out or you might be seeing, you know, harsh realities, you might be caring for sick people and that sort of thing. The need for you to really, you know, pull back and take care of yourself. Um, the ritual card, let me just read it for you. I keep passing it. Okay. So I love this. This is very high priestess energy. Okay, letting go, changing phases. Yeah, so again, these readings are all about the phases of the moon, you guys. This is about blue woad. The sunny yellow flowers of the woad plant belie the incredible rich indigo color of the dye they produce. The indigo ink of woad has been discovered in illuminated manuscripts written by medieval monks in 8th century Ireland. Medicinally, woad curtails blood flow and acts as a natural antiseptic. The priestess of ritual painted in blue is about to embark on a powerful ritual of the moon. This ritual symbolizes moving from one stage of life into another, in this case from the maiden to the mother. She is surrounded by the waxing and waning phases of the moon, right? This is a waning moon reading, you guys. Her belly painted with the triple moon goddess symbol. The Scottish Gaelic words, I can't pronounce this, Gaelic brew up here, meaning moon belly. Some of you may be pregnant at this time, and this could be a message that you're receiving. Um, when the priestess of ritual appears, it's time to honor the fact that an important era in your life is coming to an end. A new phase is beginning, and with it will come mixed emotions. As you enter a brand new stage in your life, it is important to honor the past with a meaningful ritual. This ritual can help temper the waves of exhaustion, irritation, and feelings of inertia as you try to grasp onto the old energy you know so well. The following ritual of the moon can help you let go and allow yourself to move into the next phase with ease and grace. Okay, so there are lots of moon rituals. I'm not going to read the ritual from the book for you, but whoa, you guys, really powerful stuff there. So I'm sure many of you already do have your own personal rituals for new moon, for full moon. You know, there's also waxing and waning moon rituals. Um, just have a search if that's something you don't already do. And especially, you know, this is a period when, you know, a lot of us will be feeling exhausted. It's come right after the full moon, which is a major high. And so this is that come down period period where we're healing and you know where things are slowing down okay so nice messages thank you all right <laughs> Kali popped out she's like <laughs> say no more <laughs> endings and beginnings the old must be released so that the new can enter and look at that we've got that moon there we have that eclipsed moon, but the importance of the full moon, the importance of all the cycles of the moon. Um, as you guys may know, Kali, it, you know, strikes fear in the hearts of some, um, but she's a beautiful, she's a beautiful energy. Um, Kali was uh, a Hindu goddess or is a Hindu goddess feared by those who don't understand the natural cycles of birth, death, 
and rebirth. You guys, cycles, the importance of figuring out where you are in the cycle of your life, of the world, okay? The natural order of things. Kali is the embodiment of mother nature who cleanses away the old with natural storms and fires to make the ground fertile for new crops and life. Kali is the ultimate get things done goddess and she's a powerful ally to those who call upon her. Like a wise stage mother, she'll push you beyond your comfort zone to reach the heights of your potential. And we see that all over this reading, the success, the chariot, you know, wow, you guys. So the key words for Kali is your current changes are for the best. Keep your thoughts positive as they're very powerful. What appears to be a loss is really the beginning of a happy new phase. Let the past go. It's time to move on. My dearest Cancers, I love you guys so much. I'm going to leave it there for you. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button. Comment, share, ring that notification bell. But most of all, I want to thank you for all the love and support that you show this channel. You guys are consistently my highest viewers. I love you so much. Thank you. Have a beautiful day and take care.